I'll be honest, I watched a bunch of rig building videos for my FX6. You know, I couldn't wait to try them all out once this arrived. And then, I'm not gonna lie, most of them are quite rubbish. No offense, but I just don't really get how some of you use the rigs that you've built. They're either way too front heavy or even side heavy, you know, having the monitor and other things all on the left side really sticking out. It just makes when you're using the camera handheld, it's always leaning because all the stuff is just on the left. I don't really get how you use that. Or you can't even use the top handle because the monitor is plugged in or something else is plugged in on the actual handle itself, so you can't grab it. I don't know, I just wanna be able to use my camera very easily um, in any position I put it in, whether that is, you know, handheld from me gripping the side or as me gripping on the top, I just wanna be able to use it wherever it is. So I'm gonna show you a build that I use. It might not be perfect, but it works very well for me. So we'll kick things off with the body and on that I have the small rig cage. Now there's a bunch of these, you know, this small rig one, the tilter, the condor blue, probably more and they're all pretty much the same thing, they just provide additional mounting points. The main reason I chose the smaller cage over all the others is one, I can access my SD card and my CF Express cards very easily. I know the tilter one to slightly block that. Two, I like how easy it is to add or remove the V-mount plate. And lastly is this little bit on the side. I just like how this is organized. You know, it has all the tech so you know exactly what it is plugged in as it does block the one on the camera. Um, you have your hot shoe mount here, so where I put my transmitter. And yeah, I just think this works quite well. Even though I do like the V-mount plate on this cage, I don't actually use it all the time. I'm gonna show you what I actually use most of the time to power my camera. But first we'll go with the stock handle. Always protect this little thing, putting it back inside the handle for storage. So that's the top handle installed. And as you can see, I already have the monitor attached. I keep the stock monitor to the back left of the top handle. Um, I just find that it's easiest to be able to control it, to be able to look at the screen. It's a smaller screen, so I want to see the settings a bit closer to me. I just find that's the best placement so I can still use my right hand for the top handle, um, yeah, it just works the best for me being there. And then I'll put the lens on just to balance this weight out a bit. Cool, I'll go ahead and put the stock side handle on. The next stage would be putting on my seven inch monitor, which is the Port Keys L87P, I believe. Um, I did a terrible job, as you can see, if you can see, installing the screen protector. So you need to redo that because you can see it's just loads of bubbles and it just doesn't look great. So uh, put, nope, I don't do that first. I put the small rig mount. So it's like a five inch magic arm. Um, I just find this just keeps the camera, the camera, the monitor nice and close. So I can adjust this. Um, I'll just show you another angle. So this is kind of my POV of how I would roughly look at it. So I prefer having the monitor right in the center, you know, on the top and the middle of that top handle. I just find it easier to frame my shots. I don't really like some of the other videos I've seen where, you know, the mount coming out to the side and your monitor's hanging over here. I just find you're constantly fighting to have the, ba the balance of the camera because it's so like left-sided heavy. So I prefer having the monitor right on top. And then with that, I just connect a braided HDMI cable and then if you look closely, I'm managing all of my cables with these little sprigs. These are tiny little rubber things that just allow me to have some sort of cable management so my cables aren't going everywhere. Now moving on to the power of the camera. Now obviously I don't really use the stock battery unless I'm flying this on the gimbal just because it doesn't really power much. And I don't always use a V-mount battery because they can be quite heavy and just make the whole thing a little bit bigger. Obviously there's a time and place to use them, but for the most part, I use this, which is a Swit LP, LBSU90C. So it's a 90 watt battery, which is only just lower than my V mount, and it goes directly into the camera. Now, the main reason I chose this battery is one, obviously it's 90 watts, so it's quite powerful, much more than the stock battery. Two, it's smaller than a V mount, obviously it does stick out a little bit, but I prefer this than the big V mount. And three, it has a D tap built into the battery. So I can go ahead and plug this in. We can loop that round and power the monitor or transmitter directly from this battery. So the same way how you would have a V-mount powering the camera and um, any accessories, I do the exact same thing with just this battery alone. Additionally, yes, there is more. This also has a USB-C port and that allows me to power my wireless transmitter, but we'll get into that later. But yeah, I definitely recommend this as an additional battery. Even if you're not using external accessories, it's still a better option than a stock battery one. You can charge it via USB-C and that's always a lifesaver being able to use that as opposed to that whole massive block thing that you have to use with the stock battery. 
It's just not ideal. This just makes the whole process a lot easier. Yes, it does stick out. Yes, you can't hot swap. Well, no, you can't hot swap the batteries. But yeah, as I said, there's a time and place for every rig. And this is what I use for most of the time. Next, and this is not something I use very often at all. It's literally only when I absolutely need it because yeah, it looks cool, but it's just extra weight, extra hassle is the map box. Now I use the Tilter Mirage map box because as you can see, just slips right in. It comes with a bunch of um, well, they step up rings that I just attach to all my lenses. It just makes it easier and adds a little bit of extra protection having that outer edge. And it just means I can just slip this on whenever I need it to. Um, you know, you can obviously still put filters in or I can screw the filters on top because they are stackable. I just find this is an easier way to map to have a matte box um, if I'm not using rails, which I do sometimes, but again, if I don't need it every time, I'm not gonna bother putting them on because it's just more weight and more hassle. Not something I use every time, but when I do need a wireless transmitter, these are the ones I use, and they're the Hollyland Mars 400S Pros, I think. Um, yeah, I connect them via SDI, and then that would go on the side of the camera here. So just on that plate that I mentioned earlier, on the side of the camera, it just slots in there and then the SDI port. So obviously we have all this cable, not, not having that. So I'd wrap this round here, stick that inside the sprig for a bit of cable management. Then I'd find the smallest MPF style battery I can find just for weight, because I don't need the battery, but you need the battery to have it on, be powered. Anyway, we're powering via USB-C. So plug that in, loop this round in there into the battery. And now we are powering the monitor, the camera, and the wireless transmitters all from this battery without having that massive bulbous B mount style battery. If I wasn't using it right now, I would have the microphone in. That's the Sennheiser MKE 600. That's that one. Um, there is the spacer here because, for whatever reason, Sony have this massive gap, I guess, for their microphones. And that's pretty much the whole rig. Now, if there's anything like I wanted to like really take away from this video with this particular rig, get your own monitor, get your own map box, get whatever works for you. Um, I would highly recommend one, this battery, the Switz LBSU90. Switz, that's a weird name. Um, that and these sprigs. I'll link everything down below, but those are things that I think that makes this rig work very well. But I do want to reiterate, this whole rig isn't something I use every day. This isn't something I to use for every job. This is just how I would build it out and it's kind of-ish, the biggest it will get unless there's extra things I need, but there's just no point, in my opinion, putting loads of accessories and things just for the sake of it, making your whole life eat harder, with more things to carry, more things to pack, a heavier rig just in general to carry. Um, so yeah, the main things, as I said, the sprigs, the battery, everything else, do what you want. Just, just get what you want.